if you can catch your thoughts in the early subtle stages of each day. And the reason we say of each day is because while you are sleeping, the momentum of your thoughts does subside because your active attention to them isn't happening. And so that doesn't mean that tomorrow you won't wake up and remember today or yesterday because you undoubtedly will. There will be things that will remind you and it's easy to return both to the things that you like to think about and the things you don't like to think about. But in the morning when you first awaken, the momentum of all thought has subsided so substantially that you could begin a better feeling trend if you wanted to or if you decide to. And that really is where your power is. It's in those early thoughts in the new morning or those early thoughts after meditation, after you've quieted your mind, because in the lack of momentum, you can choose the momentum that you would like to encourage. Clarity of desire is so much more important than you may realize. Clarity of desire. Desire not laced with doubt. But that's not the easiest thing sometimes, is it? If you have a desire that you've been desiring for a while and you want it to come to full fruition where you can enjoy it fully in your physicality and it hasn't come about, then it's hard not to notice that it hasn't come about. Because after all, you do have physical awareness, physical senses, and so it's logical that you would be sifting through the variety of your life and noticing what's there that you like and what's there that you don't like and what's missing that you would like to come. That's a logical thing. But if you get too carried away in that observation of what is missing, then your vibration may be so full of what's missing that it can't come. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? It doesn't seem right, we know, especially when you first begin to hear about it, that this is a universe that's based upon attraction, and you get what you think about whether you want it or not. So if you're thinking about something that you don't want, then something that you do want can't come instead. One of the good things about you is that you're fickle. <laughs> so you don't focus on anything for very long, really your thoughts sort of move about depending on what's going on and that can be an advantage to you if there are things that you don't want that might be occupying your thought process because if you get distracted from those things and begin focusing upon other things then things can get better for you but it's far better instead of just randomly observing all over the place at whatever's loudest in your experience is so much better when you decide to be a deliberate creator and get good at being a deliberate creator. And a deliberate creator is, by our definition, someone who cares about how they feel and guides their thoughts to the best feeling thought that they have available to them right now. Now, we offered those words specifically the best feeling thought that you can find right now because sometimes you're in a place where only good feeling thoughts are flowing to you. Sometimes you get on a sort of rampage of appreciation where the momentum of your vibration is so much that only good feeling thoughts are occurring to you and sometimes you can't find a good feeling thought for the life of you. Sometimes it feels like your thoughts are thinking you because your mind is just full of thoughts that you don't want to be there but you can't change the subject sometimes. And that's because law of attraction is managing things. And if you've got a vibration going and it really doesn't matter why, and it's about things not going well for you, then that is your vibrational output, which means that is your vibrational point of attraction, which means even from your own thoughts, you can't find good ones. It's not just that it feels like the universe is beating up on you. It's not only that it feels like people around you aren't being all that nice. It's that you yourself are beating up on yourself with your own thoughts that don't feel good. And so we call that attraction by default or creation by default rather than deliberate intent. And it's a natural thing, but you can, not all at once, but you can gradually improve that. 
You can think more good feeling thoughts today than you did yesterday, and your point of attraction will improve. And the next day, more still, and your point of attraction will improve because law of attraction will help you on the momentum of the improved thinking, and law of attraction will help you on the momentum of the not good feeling thoughts. The law of attraction just yields to you more of the thoughts that you are thinking. So here you are in these magnificent bodies and you understand your personalities to some extent. And we want you to feel with us the importance of you here now. We mean in this body, in this personality, in this time and space. It matters that you're here. You came with great intent. You came from non-physical and some of you acknowledge that. You believe that there is something after this life experience and it's logical that there was something before this life experience. We would like you to have a clear understanding of how the non-physical meshes with the physical and how important the physical is to the non-physical as the non-physical is important to the physical. We would like you to understand that we really are all one with the potential of blending more than most physical humans allow because of the thoughts that they are thinking. But you were source energy before you came into this physical body. And of course you will be source energy once you have what you call your death experience. There is no death because you are eternal. But as you take your focus from this body and reemerge back into the non-physical, of course there is that experience. But what we want you to understand is that even while you are here in this physical body, that the larger part of you, the energy from which you have come and the energy to which you will return is still present and active with you. Sometimes you refer to that as your soul. Sometimes you refer to that as your guardian angels. Sometimes you call that God. It doesn't matter what the label is, but it is important that you understand the existence of that source energy part of you. So in all moments that you are conscious and in this physical body, awake and focused, you are calling a point of attraction to you, but your inner being is also calling a point of attraction to the non-physical part of you. So there are two points of attraction, you might say, that it is to your advantage to blend. You sort of get what we're talking about? The non-physical you is focused upon your furthermost evolution. When you know what you don't want and you ask for more, that more, that more money, or that more love, or that more appreciation, or that more clarity, that more whatever it is that your life has caused you to ask for, is being lived now by that non-physical part of you. So that non-physical you is now standing in this more expanded place, and law of attraction is responding to you in that more expanded place. And the difference between you over here in your physical body and you over here in your non-physical beingness is that in your non-physical beingness, you don't contradict your own desire. But in your physical form, when you do that, you cause separation, not between you and what you want. Yeah, that, but that's not the important part. Between you and the expanded version of you. And that's what causes you to feel negative emotion. When you're thinking a thought in your physical body that harmonizes with the knowing of your inner being, the emotion that you feel is one of love or elation or passion or satisfaction or interest or clarity. But when you're thinking a thought that is opposing what your inner being source you knows, then you feel agitation or disease. You feel uneasiness or you feel overwhelmment or you feel blame or guilt or anger or fear or some negative emotion. And so every emotion that you feel, first of all, is happening in the now. And we want you to know that the now of you in your physical body and the now of you in your non-physical realm is the same now because your inner being is not thinking about where you used to be or where you're going. Your non-physical being is focused on you right here, right now. This is where all the power of creation is. There has always been a now and the now has always been powerful. But what most humans don't know about this now is that this now out here on this leading edge is where all that is non-physical is focused too. Humans have got that so 
confused in their mind because you tell stories to yourself, flawed premises like source is already done with creation and source is sitting and waiting for you to catch up and nothing could be further from the way that it is. You can't explain eternity in that way with somebody being done with something. No one will ever be done with anything. The non-physical is forward with you. And that's why when life causes you, genius you, out here on the leading edge to want something more and you launch that rocket of desire, your inner being is all over it, knowing it holding the light, holding the attention upon it. And law of attraction is responding to that, calling all cooperative components to this new creation of you, calling you to. The question is, are you going? And the answer is in your emotions. If you feel great, the answer is yes, you're going along with your new expansion. But if you feel negative emotion in some way, then you're not going along, not right now. Right now, you've got active in you a thought that isn't letting you go. And that's the whole point of why we're visiting with you and why you've called us forth and what it is that you want to know. You want to understand how to create your own reality, how to be the pure positive energy being that you are. And so you're sifting through life experience and knowing what you don't want. And in that process, you know what you do want. You never know more clearly what you do want than when you're looking at something that you don't want. So. When you know what you don't want, you launch a, what we've been calling a rocket of desire because it's a vibration that emanates from you and it is pronounced and important even though often you are unaware that you're even launching the rocket. But you set forth this vibrational thought or energy. But if you're like most people, even though you've launched this rocket of what you do want, since you launched it from an awareness of what you don't want, you have an awareness of where you already are about the same subject, and usually they are opposing thoughts. So you don't get any immediate response from your new thought. Now, if you could launch a new thought and not contradict it with the reality that you are currently living, then you'd begin to get momentum right away. And because of this, you would come to know the powerful being that you really are. Because things are always working out for you, and you're supposed to get what you want. And when life shows you what you want, and you begin momentum in that direction, if you weren't countering it with other thoughts, the momentum would take care of itself. Have you ever had the experience where you were just wondering about something, and you turned the next corner, and there's a real live answer just appearing before you? That's because you ask and it was given immediately and you were able to translate what was given into the physical equivalent because you weren't contradicting your own thought with a thought that goes in opposition. And you know, the thoughts that are most in opposition to your new desires are your awareness of what is. So how does someone become so good at only thinking about what you want? Well. It's a little tricky because you're observing so much that you do like, but you're also observing so much that you don't like, and you've been trained to be objective observers. You've been trained to be fair-minded, to be balanced. You've been trained to weigh the pros and the cons and the pluses and the minuses. After all, how can you make a good decision unless you do that? Well, we are not in disagreement with that at all because we know that sifting through the variety of what you're living is what causes you to launch those rockets. We just want you to launch them and then follow the direction of the new launch rather than defend the new launch by justifying that you need it because what is isn't enough for you. If you could just trust more that when you launch it, the universe is after it, that your inner being is after it, that source is helping you, then maybe you could relax a little bit and just understand that things are working out for you and that universal forces are assisting you. We have come into your experience in order to explain to you how the laws of the universe work and more important, who you are in this universe, on this leading edge. You are creators out here on the leading edge of thought where thought turns to things, where you get full manifestations of the ideas that are occurring to you as you are moving through life experience.